Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a particle system like this that will take shape of your text. I'm also going to show you how you can change out the particles to have your own custom image. So as you can see right here, this is our little logo right here of the W for Wiki. And you can see right here that there's some depth to these uh, letters as well. So let's just jump into spline and show you how easy it is to set up. And here we are in a brand new spline file. So let's go ahead and delete this default rectangle they always add inside of here. And the very first thing we need to do is create the text. So if you just go up to the plus icon right here, let's just click on text. And you just click anywhere in the scene and just start to type in something. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it wiki. And what I like to do is you click and drag these handles over. So that's the width of this whole container right here, this uh, text. And then over here on the right, this is where you're gonna change the font size. So you can see right here, we want it pretty big, so let's say like around 300. That's not too bad. And then if it breaks down like this, just click and drag that a little bit more. And then I always like to do this right here underneath horizontal. I like to put it in the center, and then you can kind of align it right here in the vertical. Maybe stretch this a little bit like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is just click and drag this up a little bit because we want our particle system to be right here. The next step is we need to add the particles. So just click this add new object button up here and click this one in here it says particle emitter. And as soon as you do that, it's gonna automatically add your particle system right here. And as you can see here on the right, it always puts it at the position of uh, zeros. So it's always right in the middle of your scene, which is kind of where we want it. So this is a good first start. Now what we need to do is let's go ahead and change these colors. So if you know that you're gonna have your particle system just white, like in the example I showed, you can just change these two colors to white. But depending on your use case, you may want to have different colors. But let's go ahead and just change that to white right now. Now what we need to do is assign the particle system to the shape of this text that you just created up here. And to do that, you go underneath your particle, particle emitter right here and underneath shape. Instead of plane, you go up to custom object. Then under object, you're going to go ahead and select your text. So as soon as you do that, you're going to see that it changes the shape. And what it's trying to do is take shape of the wiki. Now, it's going to not look great right now because we need to change a few settings and add a lot more particles for this to actually look like it's doing something. So let's go ahead and change the uh, birth rate right here. So if you see right here, there's only 50 particles at a time that's kind of emitting. So what we need to do is increase that to something like 300. So as soon as you do that, you're going to see right here, it's starting to look like the word wiki. In order to make it where these particles just don't float up into space, there's a few other settings you're gonna to need to change. So let's go ahead and change the lifetime. So instead of one second, let's do it something like 10. So this means for 10 seconds, the particle is gonna exist and then it will disappear. As Soon as you do that, you'll see it really goes off the screen. So what we need to do is let's change the speed to zero. So we need to have that at zero. As Soon as you do that, you're gonna notice not much has changed. What's really causing these particles to float up is right here underneath your particle forces, your gravity is set to one by default. So as soon as I change that to zero, you gotta give it a second and then you're gonna notice it stays in place. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for more of an effect where the particles are just staying in place. So depending on how big your text is um, and a few other variables, it might look a little cluttered like this. So if you wanna go ahead, you can change this to something like 200 so there's a lot less of them you can also change the size of your particles right here so you can see as soon as i do that the size is pretty good at like a 14. and another setting you might want to change is how the phase are happening so by default they have it where it slowly fades out so if you go underneath your alpha fade and your size fade you can change this to something like constant and what it's going to do is just kind of stay the same it's not going to have these uh, kind of linear fades out so if this is the kind of effect you're looking for, this is a really good first step. And the next thing we're gonna wanna do is, let's go ahead and if you go to the side of this text right here, you're gonna see it's very flat. So if you want it to have some depth, so if you want the words to kinda come out in the particle system, um, that's really easy to do. What you need to do is go back into your text right here, and under extrusion, what you can do is just click here on the right and just slide this out. So now you're gonna see that the word up here has some thickness. 
And what's cool is anything that you change up here inside of your text layer, it's automatically gonna emit correctly on the particle system. So if I go back here and go back to particles, you're gonna see uh, what you have to do is click it again and then it will go through. So you can see right here, there's now a thickness to it. So if I go to the side view, you can see it's taking the thickness of how far you've extruded the text. So of course, when you do that, uh, you might need to increase your particles. So basically when you're working with these particle systems, there's a lot of like, you know, finessing of how many um, birth rates you have, the size, you got a lot of different settings that you're gonna have to kind of tweak with. And so if you wanted to go like that, that's pretty good. You could also change the speed to be a little bit faster. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see that it, it kind of lifts up. And if that's the effect you're going for, that could work. But let's go ahead and just set that back to one. And let's see how that looks. That might look, you gotta wait for all of these to kind of go off the screen and then you can see it kind of goes up. So the confusing part is the speed and the gravity kind of play together. So if I go to the gravity and let's say I want it to drop a little bit. Um, so what you could do is you could do a really small amount. So I'm going to do negative 0 0.02 and let's see what happens here. So you can see right here, the gravity is making everything kind of drop just a little bit. And within 10 seconds, it will go all the way down here. So yeah, like I said, there's a lot of tweaking you're going to have to do, but let's say I want it to be five seconds and just drop a little bit. You could do it like that. And then down here, they give you even more settings, particle randomness. So you can change out how much you want to rotate these things. This will come into play more in the next part when we add a logo to it. But you can change how random the scaling is going to be in the rotation. So that could be a cool little effect as well. And then underneath particle noise, you can give it a different way that it's going to emit these things. So they give you three different uh, systems right here that you can kind of play around with. But let's just go ahead and keep this back to the default. So that's how you can use the particle system with the default particles. Next, what we're going to do is change out the particles into our own custom image. Now, let me jump over into Photoshop and show you how I have this all set up. So what I wanted to do is let me show you the blue. So this is just the W that we're going to use. This is part of our logo right here. And I want to change it to white. So I just kind of did a color overlay of just white right here. And this is really important. You're going to want to make sure that this is nice and small. So in this case, I'm going to keep it at like 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels height. Now, what I did learn is when you do an image, a custom image shape, it needs to be in a perfect square. Um, so if you have anything, it needs to always fit in the aspect ratio of like a one to one because it will automatically try to stretch it if you have any other dimensions other than just like a one to one ratio. So once you save that out as, in this case, I'm gonna save this out as a PNG. Now what you need to do is just click right here where it says image on the right. Once you have your particle emitter select, selected underneath particles image, you click this button where it says default, and then you're gonna just select the new PNG that we just created. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna notice it's uh, automatically changing the particles to that new logo. That's really cool and really easy to do. And if you remember down here when I was kind of playing around with how random this works, uh, in this case, I didn't really want any of these to be rotated because you can see right here, when I rotate this stuff, it's just randomly going to rotate your uh, particles. So depending on what you're using, you could, you know, use that, of course. And then here's all the different scales. So you can have it where some of them are scaling up, some are scaling down. So they give you tons of different options. So of course, after you add your custom image, you might need to make even more adjustments. So I might want these to be a little bit bigger like this. So change that. You don't want to add a global rotation. Maybe have the lifetime at like 10 might be good. And like I said, if you want to change the colors, you can do that as well. So if you want some of them to be red, what it's going to do is, oops, let me go back here. It will blend the colors or it could do random. So sometimes it will be some are red, some are white. So they give you a lot of cool different options right here. But in this case, let's just keep everything white and you could just keep that at blend. And the next step is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your original text right here is gonna be hidden. So you can just go over here in the text layer and this little eyeball right here, that's gonna hide automatically. So now whenever you go view this on a website or embed it, if I hit play, you're gonna see it's that old text is not in there at all. 
And so that's pretty cool right there. And like I said, anytime you make an edit to the text right here, it will automatically update in the particle system. And then that's really about it. The only thing I recommend after this is just make sure that underneath export, click on run test and make sure it's kind of optimized. So in this point, it's 9.6 kilobytes, which is really small. Um, but I will note that if you use a particle system on a website, if it's an older computer, it might start to chug a little bit because these particle systems take up a lot of GPU usage. So what I recommend is just testing it on a few computers if you can, maybe on an older computer and make sure that it runs uh, smoothly. If for some reason these particle systems are really chugging down your website, you could always go ahead and export this as like a video and then you can always embed that. That's a lot less intensive on the CPU and the GPU. And that's it for the spline tutorial. Make sure you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.